Almost a million and a half Americans each year suffer injuries to the nerves that lead to the extremities, which can cause loss of muscle function or sensation. A new solution for surgeons to repair the damage is having success for many patients. Karen Zatteray, CEO of Axigen, discusses peripheral nerve injuries recently suffered by a teenager and the newest technologies that were developed that aided in his nerve reconstruction. Nerves can be injured in several different ways. Um, trauma is the most common. Uh, everything from motorcycle accidents to power tool injuries to being cut on glass, any of those are ways that nerves can be injured. But they can also be injured in surgery. Uh, either accidentally as an un unexpected consequence of the procedure or in things like tumor removal when uh, they need to take tissue out the nerves can be injured. Nerve injuries can't be seen on an x-ray. It actually takes an examination to identify whether there's a nerve injury or not. As a patient if you're experiencing numbness or you can't feel different temperature changes uh, or you have muscle weakness or even paralysis uh, all of those are symptoms of nerve injuries. Uh, finally, another symptom might be pain. If you have pain, any of those indications could mean that you should seek a nerve specialist. Karen Zatteray reveals the improvements to repair nerve damage. Axigen's a company that's entirely focused in providing solutions for surgeons to use in repairing peripheral nerve injuries, and they provide surgeons with new options for their patients. Historically, surgeons had to borrow a nerve from somewhere else in the patient's body to repair an injured nerve, and that meant at bare minimum the patient was going to lose function in one place to fix something that was more important someplace else. Today, with our innovative solutions, they don't have to have that deficit, and again, they have the option to have the repair for the injured nerve. Karen Zatteray talks about Matthew and his mom. Matthew is a young man who's a good example of the everyday trauma that can occur and end up in the emergency room. Matthew had an injury, uh, was sent home. Uh, it turns out that his mother recognized that he had a nerve injury, that he had numbness in his foot. Um, she wanted to make sure he got the best care and was very proactive in finding a nerve specialist so that Matthew could be treated and appropriately repaired so that he could get back to his everyday activities and in sports like he wants to be. We had just finished cooking dinner and Matthew goes to get the crystal butter dish and it slips from his hands and he thought it was going to hit his foot so he jumps up and then when he lands, he lands with his whole body weight on the, a broken piece of crystal and it, it slices the arch of his foot open and it cuts tendons that bend the toes, two nerves and an artery. Dr. Dellen, who's a world-famous surgeon in the area of peripheral nerve repair, he's from Johns Hopkins and the, runs the Peripheral Nerve Institute, got involved in the case. When Matthew came to me, it was clear that he'd stepped on a piece of glass and had a great deal of bleeding and went to an emergency room where the bleeding was stopped and they told uh, Matthew he needed to see a doctor to hook up his nerves. And when you examined him, there were areas of his foot, if, for example, my hand where his foot he could, feel, um, he could feel the little toe and the fourth toe. He had real trouble feeling the big toe and the second and third toe. In fact, he had no feeling in them. He could feel his heel. It took us about seven hours for the surgery. I couldn't figure out at first why the bottom of his foot didn't look right. And I realized that there were none of the tendons to make the toes work. The glass had cut all his um, tendons to the bottom of his foot. So I realized that besides fixing the nerve, I had to rehook up all the tendons so in Matthew's situation, he had about an inch between two nerves. Dr. Dillon said that if we didn't have the advanced nerve graft from Axigen, where the nerve had been cleaned out, the cells removed, that could be used in Matthew's foot, then they would have had to have made an incision on some other part of his leg, and then he would have had deficits there. The chance of success for Matthew was very good because I was able to work on the nerves before a long time had elapsed. I was able to work on the nerves before the small muscles in the foot had died so the nerves could grow back into them. His prognosis is good because usually nerve repairs in children do better than uh, nerve repairs in adults. The prognosis was good in terms of getting movement back because I was able to reorganize and hook up his uh, tendons and he took really good care of himself for those first six to eight weeks and was very, very uh, diligent after uh, surgery. He became part of the nerve regeneration process and was really committed to watching his nerve get better and, and help it get better. 
And that was a lot of fun to me. It was an extra bonus to get little movie clips of him playing basketball again and walking on stilts. I feel pretty fortunate because we found such a good doctor the first time. And it's pretty nice that on it went from me lying on a couch and having doctors say they don't know what to do with my foot to having a surgery and now I'm able to walk and run and do pretty much whatever I want. It was a little scary and I didn't really know how it was going to turn out, but I'm happy that I had the surgery done. Matthew went from before surgery to having no sensation at all from the arch of the foot to the end of the toes to waking up from surgery and all of a sudden the nerves were alive. I think that he's had an amazing recovery. I mean, you wouldn't even know he'd ever had an injury if you watch him running around outside playing with his friends or neighborhood kids. I mean, climbing trees and riding bikes and jumping on the trampoline. and Anything that he's doing, you can't tell that he's had such a traumatic injury. Additional clinical research is underway to further the outcomes of peripheral nerve repair. We see expansion into things like uh, the complications associated with prostate cancer and breast cancer and helping to provide solutions in those areas. But most importantly, we want to continue to increase the awareness of patients so that they can uh, be advocates for their own health care and have good outcomes in the area of peripheral nerve injuries.